Welcome me, welcome you to the house of Iman where all your dreams come true. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm Eric. This is the House of Yvonne. Thank you to all my subscribers who are coming back for another video. If you're new to the channel, um, you know, like, click the button that says subscribe, okay, to join the House of Yvonne, right? And then you're going to like this video, comment, share this video, and click the notification bell to be notified of when I drop new videos. As you can see in the title, we're talking about the Squid Games. This show has been like all over the globe since it's on Netflix. Um, from what I have already read about the series, I've already watched it, but what I've read about the series, um, it's the highest grossing series on Netflix in a long, very periodically time. Okay. And so um, I watched it. It has a lot of violence, a lot of gore blood, a little comedy sprinkled in there, um, action. It has everything that a good show needs. Um, and it also has explicit, you know, sex scenes. Um, just one, but you know, it's there. Um, it It's a pretty good show. I really like it. The games are fun, especially the um, red light, green light. I love that scene. It's amazing. Um, the cinematography of the series is Je ne sais quoi, if I do say so myself. Uh, but let's stop talking about the show and actually talk about the show, okay? So I'm just doing my skincare because I'm about to head out in a minute. But, um, so the show starts off with this guy. I still don't know his name, the main character. Um, mind you, I still have to finish watching the last, what, 20 minutes of the show because I fell asleep on it, but everything else was amazing. Mm. So, I don't know the main character's name. What's his name? This look right quick. But we're thrust into the show seeing the main character and um, he is a guy down on his luck. He has a job, but it's not that well paying and he lives with his mother he has a daughter at this point he's complaining that his mom should give him more money since the daughter's birthday is coming up and she's like i already gave you money i already gave you money like leave me alone i'm not i can't afford no more Mind you, she, like, she's in her late 60s, early 70s. She's getting up there in age and still working hard. Not hardly working like him, but hard working. And so she gives him more money. Well, no, she doesn't. She leaves the house, the apartment. And he goes into where she, I'm assuming, just keeps um, like her savings. In a little jar in the kitchen. He takes. Well it's not even money. It's a card. Like a credit card. And it has money on it. So he goes to try to get the money out. She changed the pen. Um, and he tried at least three times. And it didn't work. And then he tried his daughter's birthday as the pen. For the card. And it worked. And he got money out. He used that money to go with one of his friends. Drinking buddies, smoking buddies, to the horse, um, the place where you go to gamble on the horse race. He went there. They went there. Um, he tried once, lost. Tried again. The second time, he won. And it was like what, fourteen million won? It was. It was a high number in their currency. And he balled out. Like he got all his coin. Put in his pocket and then when he went outside to have a little smoke break and celebrate with his buddy. He was caught off guard by his debtors. So the debtors, I'm assuming he is this gang that he borrowed money from. And he still owe like a, a hefty amount. And so they found him and started walking up on him. It was about six dudes coming from either direction in a group of three. And so 
he started running away. He ran into this girl who later is um, a part of the game as well later on the show. But he bumps into her and he thinks he dropped his money later on, but she actually took it. Like, the girl's a good thief, okay? Like, he even know he didn't have the money when the gang caught up to him. Because when the gang caught up to him, he was saying, oh, I got the money right now. And then he started searching in his jacket pocket. Couldn't find it because the girl had already took it. Okay? Lo and behold, they beat him up a little bit and tell him, you need to give us our money. Okay, fast forward. He goes to the train station trying to get a ride um, back home. And then he missed the train by a few seconds. So he sits on one of the benches. This guy comes up. And it's the guy, I feel like, in the... Correct me if I'm wrong, but it is the guy from Train to Busan that, um, the main character, the daddy from Train to Busan, oh, he's so fine. He's so handsome. But that was him. He was one of the workers, um, getting, recruiting people for the Squid Games. So, the way this worked, the recruiters went out and talked to people down on their luck and... Like, they knew everything about them. Where they work, where they live, who they are, their their family members, names, like, all that they knew. And so, he says all that to the main character. And I'm supposed to be looking up the main character's name. I just totally forgot. And so, he says all that to him. And he said, he has two envelopes, a blue and a red. And he says, I just want to play a quick game with you. If you can beat me, I'm going to give you blah, set amount of money. Right? And so he does that. He does the game. And if he loses, he gets slapped real hard. The main character. Song Ji Han. That was the main character name. Okay. So Song Ji Han gets slapped every time he loses the game. And the, the, the purpose of the game, you have to use one of the envelopes to hit on the ground towards the other envelope. Making the other envelope on the ground flip over on the other side. That's how you win the game. So he kept going. It was about 20 minutes on and off. Getting slapped. Getting slapped. Getting slapped. Because he, Song J. Hong was losing. And so I really hope it's Song J. Hong that's the main character. I believe it is. Yeah. Song J. Hong. Okay. Cool. I was right. Period. Um, so he finally won. And then... Um, Later on that night, a card, a little gold business card with a number on it was left under his door. And all of the people that played those little small games received that gold card and said, if you want an opportunity to win bigger amounts of money, call this number. We'll pick you up. And so that starts the whole Squid Games. Everybody calls the number and gets picked up. They... It's like they get kidnapped, but you're you're a willing participant because you showed up. So it's like, mm, are you being kidnapped? Because, I mean, you willingly showed up during the nighttime in the middle of the night when nobody else would see you picked up. I mean, these are strangers. You don't know them. So, I mean, mm, I don't know. But I don't want to go into too much detail about the show because I want you guys to go watch it. If you haven't already, it's such a good show. Like I said, I have to finish the last, like, 20 minutes of it. Um, do not spoil it in the comments, okay? Don't do that, because I will block you, period. Um, but, so, I'm just going to sh the favorite points that I liked in the show. So, one, I love the green light, red light game. That was fabulous. I love how they thought it was just, like, a... Um, like an innocent game like oh we lose we get to go back home no because if you go back if they let you go back home then you're going to tell what happened then that will ruin them getting their coin okay they're not going to let you ruin their coin miss mamas so they're going to kill you and then when everybody realized oh these hoes ain't playing we're going to die if we lose it was on it was on from there okay and miss mama's the girl that stole the money from song jae hoon Baby, when she went behind that dude, and she was like, oh, I can easily push you. Ah, I, I gagged. I gagged, mama. I did the same thing. Get right behind somebody until they die. And get as close to the finish line as I can. Okay? 
Second part that I loved was, um, what was the second? Oh, yeah. After the, um, the first game, the green, red light, green light, the power went out. So everybody, they had to blindfold and gas and take everybody back home um, until they could, like, get everything back online. And it was the girl, Sanjay Hoon's daughter's birthday. Excuse me. This was, I, th I think her birthday was before or after. Yeah, her birthday was before um, that first game. But the, what I did not like when he brought his daughter back after they spent time together for her birthday, she was asleep. He was carrying her, carrying her on her on his back. Well, she, he, he he was just carrying her on her back on his back. Um. <laughs> anyway, and so the mom came out being very rude, nasty, and just belligerent for no reason. Like, okay, we get it. Your ex husband or ex fiance, ex boyfriend, whatever the baby daddy, your baby daddy is. How do you say a shit father? We get it. Like, trust, sis. We get it. We know. We This is not the first time we've seen a shit father, okay? We get it. But the way you went about it and him just asking, can I just bring her up and put her in her bed myself, go upstairs, at least to the front door of your apartment building. And she was just being nasty. And it's like, God, Lee, we get it that you don't like that he's kind of a shit father. But God, dog, he's trying at least in this moment. Let him try in this moment and let this just be a good night overall. Just be a good night overall. Like, you don't have to be nasty like that. And I don't like, even in real life, when parents, whether it's the father or the mother, be nasty to the other parent. Yes, they may have messed up, but God, dog, in that moment, if they're trying, just let them try in that moment. Yes, they may be horrible in the next moment, but in this exact moment right here, they're trying. Just just let it go. It's not that deep. It is, but it's not. It is, but it's not. Okay? Girl, that was that. And then, what else got me riled up? Oh, girl. When they were on that, um, towards the end of the movie, they did Tug of War. Girl, that game gave me... Oh, I I had, like, um, anxiety. And I wasn't even playing. Girl, I was coming up with strategies. I was talking... <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to the show. I was like, get down. Get down low. Get your stance. Okay? Buckle down. You got to get low to the ground. Get your stance. Wrap the rope around your hands. Tug it under your armpit. And you heave. Ho! Heave! Ho! Heave! Ho! Okay? Period. I was getting into that game. Alright? That makes me, without dying... That makes me really want to, like, play a squid game. I'm going to do that during summer camp next year. We're going to do that. We're going to do that. I can't even even see. We're going to do our own version of squid games. No kids are dying. Okay. We're just going to have really good fun. That's going to be fun. I can't wait. Um, But the next to last thing that really got me. Got it. When, um, what's that guy's name? Cho Song Woo. When Cho Sang Woo, when Cho Sang Woo did that to Ali, if you've seen that part of the show, you know what I'm talking about. When Cho Sang Woo tricked Ali, knowing that he was naive and trusted him, ooh, that set me off. That set me off. I understand that we're in this game and it's survival of the fittest. I get it. But when you know somebody is trusting you and you go and you disregard that and you still trick them. So the way Chao Sa Wu tricked Ali, Ali was this young kid. I would say he's in his like 20s, early 20s. He's in his 20s. He's naive. He's not from South Korea. He's from India. 
Um, and him and his family immigrated there to get a better life. And he has a daughter. I mean, not a daughter. He has a very young son, a baby son and a wife. He sent them back home because he did something bad at work. And the people was going to come and find him, probably arrest him and keep him in prison. And so he, during this game, you have to, you get a bag of 10 marbles and you have to choose with your, with your partner, because they're in pairs now, um, what kind of game you're going to play. And the first person to get all 10 marbles of the, of their opponent, they win the game. The other person gets killed. And so... Ali, they chose to play this game that Ali didn't know how to play. And it was a guessing game of how many marbles are in your hand. And whatever marbles are in your hand, if you guess wrong from your opponent, you have to give them that amount of marbles that they have in their hand that you did not guess. So say I got, you got three coins. You, on the other hand, on the other side of the screen, you got three uh, marbles in your hand. I guess even... But, you know, three is odd. So, you show me that you have three marbles in your hand, then I have to give you three marbles, right? And vice versa. And so, Ali was winning. And then, Chan San Wu got upset. And then started yelling at him, boom, boom, boom. And the, the people in pink came up. One of the people in pink came up and put his gun to his head. Because you can't get violent during the game, right? Um, and so, because it's supposed to be fair. For everybody so you can't get violent you can't get like all the people face cuss them out being them up you can't do that that'll go against the game and you'll be killed yourself so he cooled down and apologized and then came up with this strategy saying that oh let's go around and count how many people um are playing but not really playing trying to hold off because er they everybody can't lose and it's like mm, if they want to kill you they can kill you if you don't play the game the way they say you play the game. You should play the game. And so, Ali, being naive, believed Cho San Wu and went, gave him the bag. Because he was about to walk off and Cho San Wu said, oh, let me get your bag. You need to um, protect it at all costs because if you lose it, you'll, you'll just die. You'll get killed. And so, Ali gave him the bag and there were some mar some like pebbles, like little rock pebbles near them. And Cho Sa Wun took his shirt off, put it over those pedals, those uh, pebbles, and tricked Ali by putting some of those pebbles in his bag, thinking that the weight of it is the marbles that he won. No. No. It's not. Like, not Ali. Like, what is it? So he got tricked thinking that the bag that he has now is his marbles. Those were pebbles. And he found out towards the end, the last five seconds of the game, he realized that I, Cho Sa Wu just tricked me and he got killed. I don't like that because now his family back in India, they don't know if he did in prison or just left them. Like... Not knowing that he's dead because all the bodies that all the people that they killed, they cremate them. And so their bodies in the fire. Nobody will ever know where they at. Just missing people. Hundreds of missing people. Literally. There were what? 456 people. All of them missing now. That's a lot of people. 400. That's almost 500 people. What? The last thing that got me, my mom, was when. So the, there is a detective, and he infiltrates the game to figure out where his brother's at. Not brothers of plural, but like where his brother is at. Um, because his brother went missing. He found one of the gold cards, and he snuck on to the, um, underneath the vehicle. Well, he followed the vehicle where they picked the people up to get on the boat to go to the island to play the games. He snuck on the car... And he snuck onto the boat. He infiltrated the pink people with the mask. He became one of them. And so, towards the end of the show, he finds out that his brother... Hold for dramatic pause. His brother is the front man. The one 
leading this whole game. He's not in. He's not fully in charge. Like he's not the top dog, but inside of the games, he's the top dog. If you get what I'm saying, right? And so when I saw that, I was like, "Bitch, are you serious? Are you serious, Mama?" So you come to tell me I didn't gave you a kidney? The detective, the brother, he gave the other brother, the one that's a part of this Squid Games crap, he gave him a, a kidney. I gave you a kidney. Okay? And you want to be up here and you want to try to kill me? And you going to shoot me off the ledge and I fall into the water? He ain't dead. We all know when you fall off the edge of a cliff and to some water, you don't die. Because he only got shot in the shoulder. But it's just the simple fact that you betrayed me like this. I am your brother and I've been searching for you. Desperately searching for you. for To make sure that you're safe. And this is what you do to me? And my last point on this show. I know I haven't finished it. But why did we need to add white people to the mix to watch... People of color kill them, get killed. Don't we get enough of that in real life? Why do we need to see a show that bring? Granted, it's an amazing show. But in this particular moment towards the end of the show, what, the eighth episode, seventh, eighth episode? Why do we need to see white people watch black, well, not black, people of color, people with melanin, get killed as they're drinking wine and trying to get their dicks up. Like, why do we need to see that? Why? Don't we get enough of white people watching us die in real life in real time? Don't we get enough of that in real life? I know I do. I don't need to see a show where people are already getting killed. That's bad enough. People are already getting killed and I'm watching it. And then on top of that, I'm watching... White people watch them get killed? Girl, that's the only thing I really didn't like about the show. That really irritated me. And I fast forward through some of that. Because it was... I don't, some things on TV shows, I just don't care. And one of those is white people being white people. I'm so, I'm so, <laughs> sorry. I don't got time. We get there in real life. I don't need to see it in my show. In my time that I take away to just relax and just... Not think about real life. That that's one thing I will not do. I will not do at all. Well, guys, that's the show. Like I said, uh, all the other times I still have to watch the last twenty minutes of the show, and I can't wait to see what um, Song Ji what's it? Song Ji Hun does. Um, Cause I did remember he had like red hair, and I don't know where the red hair came from. He did look good though. Um, <laughs> but I'm going to finish the show. I'm going to put my thoughts on my Instagram stories. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and TikTok, House of Yvonne, Depop, House of Yvonne, Twitter, House of Yvonne, even though I'm not really on there all the time. But, you know, follow me on my socials. They'll be in the description box. Um, I really love this show. You should guys should really go watch it. Please let me know if you have watched it in the comments. Let me know how you liked it. What were some of the um, parts of the show that you liked, that you didn't care for, that got you all riled up, that made you gag, honey, okay? Miss Boots. Down, Miss Boots, all right? Um, that's, the sh that's the video, you know? Um, I love you guys. Don't go nowhere because, you know, oh, excuse me. We got more reactions, more reviews, more top five in the playlist. Um, you know, it's Halloween. I'm doing more Halloween content, whether that is movie reviews, movie reactions, um, my House of Horrors makeup series, all of that. Oh, rude. Subscribe, like, comment, share, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.